so we're just starting now, okay? All right. Okay. And people walk into the room. Okay, so camera is rolling, and okay. camera is set. So the big uh, premiere last night, if we can get your thoughts, your reaction to seeing it with an audience and what that was like for you. I think it's always really important to see comedies with an audience, you know, just to gauge the laughter, how much humour, you know, whether they're actually getting it or not. And um, no, it's fantastic. I thought they, they were a very warm audience. There were lots of laughs and... Um, the response at the end was fantastic. Stunning ovation. Doesn't get any better than that. It's great. Is that something you're used to as an actor? Is that something that Stunning ovations? Up? No. Certainly not. No. Talk about when you were making this movie. Did you know it would be that kind of thing? Did audiences were like that much? Was there any days when you thought this could be that kind of movie? Yeah, it always had that feel about it. You know, it's a very sweet idea and it's a very, you know, it, it always, you know, it, it's pretty much, I think, the movie I expected it to be, really. You know, and, um, it's a bit like Joel, the, the writer-director. It's a genuine feel-good film, you know. And I know it's an overused phrase, but um, it was, you know, it's very warmly, it's, you know, it's a very warm film, and it was very warmly appreciated last night. I thought, and um, you know, there isn't any cynicism in it, which is quite rare. Is it warm for you as an actor because you've done some darker stuff? When you bring yeah. it to life, is, is it a nicer feeling? It's no different, really. I mean, it was, you know, somebody asked me, oh, was this a conscious decision to do something a bit lighter because I'm, you know, usually playing darker pieces. And it, it isn't really, it's just a character thing, you know, it's a character-based thing. And I was, I was interested in playing a guy that was very locked off, very isolated, very antisocial, who gradually loosens up and warms up, you know. And I, I particularly like the relationship I've got with David Kelly's character, who, um, you know, it's a very sweet relationship. They start off sort of, you know, not really liking each other. Well, my character definitely doesn't like him very much, finds him a bit of a nuisance. And, um, and gradually there's a sort of thawing out, and then it becomes a very sweet and touching relationship, I think. As that relationship developed for mm. you, and then as an actor, is that enjoyable then playing that stuff? Do you, do you get to lighten up? Is it liberating for you playing the final half? But it's, it's equally, the, the, the other is fun as well. It's nice doing the scenes where you're freezing him out, you know, where he's being very warm and chirpy and very charming, and I'm just sort of deadpanning him, you know. That's, that's fun and nice as well. That whole, that whole relationship I was particularly pleased with, both, you know, in the, in the writing and in the finished product. I really like that. Talk about doing the deadpan, doing the antisocial stuff. That's something you can do very well as an actor, <laughs> along with the other stuff. But why is it about? What is it about that that you can make that pull off? If you can, I don't know. I don't. I. I, I don't know. You know. I suppose. Um, I've no idea. I mean, I'm. 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 Generally not into fussy acting. You know. If I. If I can do less, I will. You know. I'm. I'm like that with writing. If I can trim the script down, I will. If I. You know. I'm one of those people who goes through things going, do we really need that? Do we really need that? And trim it down as much as possible. And, um, and I suppose I'm also unfussy just in my whole approach, really. I'm not, um, I'm not really into sort of overcomplicating things. When do you become confident that you can pull that off with, with your expressive, with, your, with you, that kind of acting? I'm sure, I'm sure it takes a while. It's just in, intent and belief, I think. You know, it's just... I don't, I mean, I don't, you know, it's only, only when I'm being interviewed do I ever think about how I approach anything, really. You know, it's just, a, for me, it's an instinctive thing. It's just, you know, it's something I do and I, you know, I, you know my instinctive response to that character is what I carried on through the filming process and there was no point that I stop and analyse why or how I was doing it. It's just that's what I related to when I read it and that's what I sort of followed through. And, um, you know, it's very difficult, I think, talking about any, you know, process. People talk about research and all those things and I think... You know, the bottom line is, is that it's the end product that counts and whether it takes someone six months to research a part or whether it, they just stumble onto a set and open their mouth, it doesn't matter. The, the, it's the, the bottom line is the end product. What you, do you believe it or not when you watch the film? And um, so I'm not particularly interested in, in reading about how somebody immersed themselves in such and such a world for ten months and it doesn't matter if their performance is crap at the end of it. So what? It doesn't matter. Um. That, that darker side, that kind of brooding persona that you're able to pull off, and audiences seem to really enjoy, and there's already all kinds of buzz and talk about you and your other work. Is that something you're conscious of, though, that people like seeing you do that kind of darker thing? There's like a sexiness there that women are enjoying. You can kind of talk about how conscious you are of that and what that means to you. Again, I'm not, you know, I mean, the whole, you know, all those things is really for other people to talk about and the media to talk about. I, I you know, I, I don't ever, I don't approach a part thinking, oh, I'd be very brooding in this role, you know. I don't, you know, I just do, I do what I do, I don't know. Are you afraid of the attention? Do you welcome the attention? What's your take on more? 
I want to make films, and if it, if it provides the opportunity, you know, this sort of attention and the sort of heat off, you know, the crudity of success and all of that, if it creates the opportunity to make more films, that's fantastic. That's all, you know, it's a means to an end. That's all, you know. I, I love making films, and if it opens up and it means the possibility of doing films, you know, in, in the states, that's fantastic. I welcome that. What's different? What would you like to do that you haven't done so far that this could lead to now for you? I don't really know. You know, it's, I'm, I'm just, I literally just res I respond to, 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 to scripts, you know, they, they come in. I, I've got nothing. People say, oh, do you dream of playing a role or anything like that? It's just whichever one I'm doing is the one that I'm really into. And, and you know, I, I get scripts and I'm, I, I'm very clear usually about my responses. Very rarely am I sort of wavering. Is, that, is this the right thing? Is this good? But I usually read and sort of am pretty quick and go yes or no. I don't, I don't like it. And, um, you know, I suppose the, the one thing at the moment with them, um, there is a lot of attention, there's a lot of, you know, which is very nice, there's a lot of scripts coming my way, is that I suppose I've made the decision that I, I'm not going to just jump at a, a big film because it's big and be not very good in a big film. I prefer to be good in a little film again, so it's just about writing, it's about responding to good writing and I'm just sort of, I'm officially unemployed is the bottom line. You know, I mean, everyone says, oh, it must be so exciting, and I, go, oh, I haven't got a job. Is there anxiety for you as an actor with something like that, or do you know no, you'll have something? No, no. I mean, um, there's the, the, there's some very exciting things being talked about for next year, and I'm, you know, I don't want to talk about them until they're, they're definitely. I don't want to jinx them, but um, yeah. So it, it, it's it's looking promising. What was it about Croupier? Do you, can you put into words that you think audiences are responding to and critics are responding to? I think it's a it's a it's it's quite a rare story, really, because it you know it gen genuinely is a word of mouth success. You know, it, it started so small, so modest, 17 screens, maybe two weeks, see how it goes. A few reviews came out, great reviews. Reviews kept coming, you know, fantastic reviews. And it just seems that people talked about the film. People said, oh, you must go and see, and you must go and see, and it became the little film that just won't go away, you know. And um, I've talked to Mike Hodges, who said, why? Why do you think it is that this is sort of, you know, t taken? I mean, I've always thought it was a good film, I don't think. But, you know, good films aren't necessarily the ones that people go and see. And um, I honestly don't know. I think it's a very, it's a very smart film, you know. And people said, oh, it's a, you know, a lot of people said to me, oh, it's a very cool film. And they've said it in terms of, you know, that's probably because of you. And I've said, no, it's not. It's Mike Hodges. He's a very, very cool man. And, you know, he's, he's done some fantastic work. And it's his coolness, I think, that emanates into the film. It's a very assured, stylish, you know, very placed piece of filmmaking, I think. And. Um, I think people respond to that. I think they go, it's a very smart film and you feel in very safe hands. But yet you were still able to pull off the central character of that. So do you have a mm. sense of that still being your work that people are responding to? Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, the, the bottom line is, is that that film, there's an awful lot of voiceover and I knew straight away that that was the key to the part. You know, that the relationship between the voiceover and the audience is the key relationship in the film. Um, so if you can crack that attitude, of that voiceover, that's you know you're going a long way to sort of fulfilling the part, and um, and we both knew that, and I think that you know it was just a case of it was it was great fun to play technically because you know, there's there's a couple of things going on all the time you know, I remember we we when we first started to work on the film, we realised very quickly that you couldn't just lay the voiceover on you know there, there there could have been a way on a very it was a very tight schedule and you know an easy way out would have been to just have me doing general you know roulette things general dealing things and then just lay the voiceover on which is often how voiceover is laid on it's laid over and you know it's usually you know to narratively get you through a, a story and um so we sat down together and we decided that the best way to do it was that i learn every single voiceover rehearse them with all the other characters, with people who were gambling, all that, and I spoke it and say, you know, speak my thoughts very specifically, looking at people, thinking it, and then film it with me just thinking it. And we did that with every single voiceover. And I think, I think that was very important, that, because it keeps it very, very tight, and it keeps all those voiceovers and all that thing very, very specific, and you really feel like you've got inside this guy's head, you know. And I think that was, that was quite a key decision that was made in the making of the film. Talk about the satisfaction you have as an actor to have that film and now Green Fingers, which are two very different films. Is very your different, introduction yeah. to the American audience in a lot yeah. of ways. If you can talk about what that means to have um, that. Well, it's great. It's just timed very well. I mean, the fact that Green Fingers is, you know, is here just four weeks after, you know, um, um, 
Croupier has opened in Canada and it's got great reviews. It feels, you know, it feels very good and they are very different. Um, it's strange because, um, you know, Croupier was made three years ago, so they don't, I didn't make them very close together. It wasn't like, you know, but um, it just took that long to get out, I suppose. But, um, yeah, it's nice. Anything that leads to the possibility of making more movies is fine by me. How much, how much of this do you see as your talent? How much of it is luck? If you can kind of just talk about your success now and why you think all this is happening well, now. It's all luck. I mean, you know, I mean, it's all... I'm not saying that, you know, the, the, you know I, I'm delighted for Croupier because, you know, I've always really liked the film and I love Mike and I always, you know, believed in the film. But as I say, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to get an audience. And so it's, it's just particularly three. After the trouble past it had back home and wasn't very well looked after and... Um, to sort of become such a hit is, is you know, is, is just very, very sweet. And, um, but, um, you know, how that has happened, is, I, th I genuinely think it's a rare, a rare time where it's a film that sort of did sort of get out there and it was, you know, it was a word of mouth hit. People talked about the film, people went to film and that kept the momentum going. It's never had money behind it, no, I mean, releasing it for two weeks and see how it goes. There was no big advertising campaign behind it. It just, you know, is people going to see it that, that has kept it and made it into the hit that it, that it is. So that's, I think that's quite rare and quite special in this day of 25 million advertising budgets. You know, a little film like that can sneak through and, you know, there is an audience out there who wants to see it. Mm -hmm. You've been rad for me. Okay. Right. It's a pleasure. Thanks. Congratulations on everything. Cheers. And excited and heart pounding and but there's a, there is there is a other sensation that you can have in a movie it's nice of when being it works. yes love yeah to it and yeah it's, it's hard to get it right yes exactly yeah. um, and it's true I don't think this movie does become saccharine or sentimental in that way Americans have a tendency to tip in that direction mm -hmm. and the you know. Then the Brits sort of go, oh, please, you know, they're very cynical. Mm -hmm. But I don't think this one does. I think, I hope, it just kind of goes right along the edge of it and never quite tips over. Mm -hmm. Are we rolling? Uh, yeah, I just, uh, now, just one thing, we've just got one here. <laughs> All right, so we are rolling now. OK, okay. I'll just have a swig of coffee. You take your swig. Get me pumping. Well, talk, talk about there you go. Talk about that edge, because a lot of that edge comes from your character and that, and that humor and that little cynicism in a, in a fun way. Talk about the joy as an actress of being able to, to make those kind of scenes work. Well, you know, it was all in the writing. Uh, Joel got it. I mean, jo Joel nailed our society, British society, beautifully. And I don't think an English person could have made this film. I think an English person would have just put the knife, couldn't resist putting the knife in, making it satirical, making it cynical in some way. Um, and I think because it's an American sensibility looking in an amused way at our world and seeing the eccentricity in it that, um, you know, that we can see but we can't really uh, engage. I mean, we can't observe it in that objective way that I think a, an American can. And I don't actually think, although this seems like an English movie, I think it's actually a very American sensibility in there. And I think also the, the celebration of achievement, which the, the Brits find very hard to handle. You know, they want to pull achievement down. And this film is about achievement, about turning your life around. I think that's quite an American sensibility. Of course, based, it's all based on a true, you know, a true story, but, um, but very loosely based. Right, right. Yeah. Talk about, we're talking about the charm of it. As an actress, is it, is it charming for you? Is it pleasant for you to be part of a movie like this after some of the other stuff you've done? Is it a liberating feeling doing a movie like this, or does it feel the same? I loved, I had a great time making this film, but I have a, I've had a great time making a lot of films, including ones that, that the, are difficult to watch. I mean, I had a fantastic time making The Cook, The Thief, His Wife and Her Lover. I couldn't wait to get to work in the morning, and I laughed all day long, you know. Um, so, you know, the material doesn't necessarily um, mean that you have a good time. I did have a great time on this film. It was great to be in England. It was great to Joel and Travis, the producer. So they were so enthusiastic and, uh, and loving our work. And that was, that was great, to work with someone who thought that we were all fantastic, you know. <laughs> um, 
they'd never worked with English British actors before, so they, you know, they thought we were great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what was it about this lady that appealed to you? specifically about... Oh, just was. that it was comedic, and it wasn't Jane Tennyson. <laughs> it wasn't a policewoman. Um, and I got to wear fancy hats and stuff, you know. And it was just so beautifully, lightly um, placed, the role. And, and that was absolutely Joel. I mean, I just did what he'd written, really. You know, often I like to add to a script or develop the script, you know, and, and develop the character. I didn't feel I needed to with this one. I just... But well, if I just play what he's written, I think that'll be just fine. Mm -hmm. Talk about where that courage comes from, because you've been doing a lot of courageous things as an actress. Where does that courage come from, your confidence to be able to know you can do something lighter and do wild stuff and do nudity and do violence, be involved in everything? Where does that courage come from in you to be able to pull it all off? I don't call that courageous. I don't think that's courageous. I mean, I think the word courage is used a little too... People who are courageous are people who, um, you know, deal with a sick child or, or um, you know, jump overboard to help. So that it's not courageous to do a movie, never. Um, but I think it comes from my sense of, of fun, really, and of what I think might be fun to do. I think also professionally, I, I often, uh, you know, I try and do the things that sort of scare me the most. This one didn't scare me. I just knew that this would, would be, you know, just a lovely thing to do. But um, I, I, it didn't need courage to do this. <laughs> this was just fun. How satisfied are you now with your stature in America and what American audiences know of you and your work? Is it something you think about in terms of what you've achieved, in terms of success? I don't anymore. I used to, um, but I don't anymore. I've, it's a great thing about getting older is you just do start learning to let go of that stuff a bit. Not totally, but a bit. Um, I have a very strange profile in America because everybody, a lot of people say, you know, oh, you're such a wonderful actress, and then they never give me a job. <laughs> so, um, but you know, they it pays off in the end. And I'm, I'm the next project I'm doing is a is a Hal Hartley film, and I'm really excited about that because that's a quintessentially American, you know, independent American director. So that's that that's that's very exciting to be in one of his films. Mm -hmm. Who are you gonna, what, what are you doing in that movie? What kind of character? Um, I'm playing a, slight, a bit Georgina Woodhouse-ish, except he hasn't seen that movie, so he doesn't know. Although much harder edge. She's, the, she's called Boss, and she's the, the head of a TV media, uh, TV program, you know, news, TV news mm -hmm. uh, program. Well, so it's very hard edged and very, you know, tough. So nice. Do you enjoy stuff like this, festivals and talking to press and having the films here and going to the parties, is that part of your lifestyle or is it something you do on occasion? How do you take all this? I always, it always seems really glamorous and exciting when you're invited and then you forget that you've actually got to work when you get there and talk. But with this film, I really wanted to help launch it because it's very, very low budget film, you know, and, um, but I loved it. And so I really, I wanted to come here and and promote it and, uh, and just stand by it and stand up for it. Well, thanks for doing so. Thank you. Thanks for talking to yeah, us. Yeah, thanks. Pleasure. <laughs> So talk about this feeling last night when you get introduced. Mr. Wakeman <laughs> by himself, I think is how it was. Well, yes, before Green Fingers started, uh, our director, writer, Joel, uh, introduced the cast. And he said, David Kelly from Waking Man Divine. And the place went up. I mean, I was made feel very much at home. The reception was staggering. You know, the kind of reception a pop star gets. I felt, my God, they think I'm staying or somebody. <laughs> it was tremendous, and it lasted all through the film. The reception was fabulous. And when the film ended, there was a standing ovation and applause that went on like forever. They just adored the film. And I think a standing ovation is fairly rare, even in Toronto, where people really are very warm and kind and good. And. Uh, because they love the picture. And it is, it's a marvelous film.
How much of that do you still crave as an actor? Do you need as an actor that kind of reception? Oh gosh, it's important. Everybody wants to be loved, but actors really need it. <laughs> and uh, it does take a bit of the jitters away because I was very nervous last night watching the film because I hadn't seen it. I, d I don't watch rushes. So I was going to see this film for the very first time. Uh, it's a year since we made it. And so I, I, as I say, just hadn't seen it. So I was going to the movies like everybody else and uh, very nervous, wondering how it would go. We knew it was a good film, but um, it was as good as I hoped it would be. And um, the fact that, you know, they were literally hooting their way through it and being very moved too. There was a lot of tears going on around me sure. during my dying scene. And uh, it was rather nice, very nice, really. Are you at the point in your career now when you're bringing this man to life in the film, you know you're hitting it right and it's working. Do you know that as you're bringing him to life? Yes, yeah. It's, um, it's a good feel. It's a good feel because at 71, the character was, you know, sort of fairly close to home. This old boy who's on his way out <laughs> makes you think. But then more scripts arrive because of that, and you realize, no, I'll be around for a while. But is that tough for you? Do you think about that kind of stuff, actually? Like well, you do. I think everybody does on a rainy day in Dublin. But um, thanks to audiences like the ones we've had for Green Fingers, um, you know, you suddenly feel young again. And we don't retire, so uh, the only thing that stops us is the great sort of call home. <laughs> which is a, a good bit off, I think. Certainly to judge by the scripts, because they're pouring in. I don't think I've ever been busier. I've been playing for half a century now, 50 years. And um, I'm certainly booked up to my 72nd birthday. And um, in a week's, in 10 days time, I'm off on a tour of the United States with the Samuel Beckett play Crap's Last Tape. So... Um, Could you ever have anticipated being this busy at this point in your career and being this wanted? I thought it would probably ease off, but it hasn't. I'm busier than ever. And I've always been busy. Um, unlike a lot of actors, sadly a lot of actors are out of work a lot of the time, I don't ever remember a period when I was, except through choice, when I was too lazy to do the next job and wanted a holiday in the sun. Um, but otherwise, no, I've just never, ever stopped. I have no intention of doing so until they, it's done for me. What's it like knowing that you bring pleasure to audiences and people see you and they get a smile on their face from your work? What's that feeling? It's very like? rewarding because otherwise it would seem like a rather empty profession. But so many people say not just congratulations on that, but so many warm-hearted people. Um, it's been said a few times today. Thanks for the pleasure you've given me, you know. Or, you know, my wife has been very ill and she saw something you were in the other day and it's sort of a, it was a big help and she was very happy. And she forgot the pain. That kind of thing makes it all worthwhile. It's a very rewarding profession anyway. But the fact that, um, the fact that you do, especially if you're doing a feel-good, film, which this is. People do come out feeling better than they do when they went in, which I think is what entertainment is about, as opposed to a lot of films where you feel a damn sight worse coming out than you did when you went in. All those sort of gloom and doom things, mm -hmm. of which there are far too many. I think everybody craves for the sort of feel-good thing, you know. Entertainment, it's called, yes. Yeah. <laughs> They don't always work, though. This one works. Why do you think this works so well? I think it's down to the director, who happens to be the writer as well, knowing what he's doing, being very devoted to the script he'd written. He feels strongly about the prison thing and that people shouldn't be labeled just because they're in prison, and that they can be turned around. You know, they can grow like the, the garden in the, in the film is it's a lovely image of what you can do with your life, you know, the, the image of growth, the symbol of growth. It's not a film that's loaded with messages, but 
I mean, it, that is a good message, if you like. And uh, what makes it work is I think that literally everybody out there identifies with the fact that life is good. They made a very good film called Life is Beautiful. And it is. And the people all have their good points. You know, everybody, you know, there are no baddies and no real goodies either, but just sort of, you know, ordinary people doing their best and getting on with the whole extraordinary mystery tour. And uh, there are lots of laughs and there are a good few tears, uh, like life. And I, I think it will go down everywhere as well as it went down last night in Toronto. The press showing today, I gather, was absolutely packed as well. A, a lot of people couldn't get into today's showing. And that was a big theatre last night, and it was jammed, it really was jammed. Lovely thing, I played in that theatre ten years ago on stage. Uh, 